Here's Tacitus on the outside. Mr. Buff is under the whip and racing in third. Here comes Tacitus right alongside of Parsimony. And it is Tacitus to take over the lead with a furlong to the finish. Tacitus now draws away, and Tacitus is pouring it on here. He's going to win the 134th Suburban. Tacitus by eight lengths. And welcome back to another Breeders' Cup preview here on Racing Rundown. Today we're getting into the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Very historic race. Always has a history of great runnings, even last year with uh, the disqualification with Code of Honor. As much as a lot of people may have disliked that, still really good race produced the winner of the Breeders' Cup Classic. Although I think it's fair to say that this year's field probably will not be producing the Breeders' Cup Classic winner. We only have five horses, so kind of disappointing, but pretty much what we expected. We'll get into all of them like we do always break them down individually. We'll start with the one happy saver who a lot of people really like this horse. This is a horse who broke his maiden at Belmont Park earlier in the year in May uh, and since then has gone on to win an allowance at Saratoga and in his last start was a winner of the Federico Tessio at Laurel. And I'll, It's easy to see why a lot of people like this horse. I'm not one of the people that's on this horse and I'll get into it when I talk about some of the other runners in this race, I was not very impressed with the Federico Tessio. I understand he broke his maiden by five and a half at Belmont, uh, which is the surface that this track is on, and that he came back and won impressively as well at Saratoga. But I was really turned off by the Tessio. I thought that he should have won by a lot more than he did against that group. That was not a very strong group by any means uh, in that Federico Tessio. And because of that, I'm not on him, but I can understand if you like him. Uh, this is a race where if you think he's good enough, the olders in here are inconsistent. I think the other three-year-old mystic guy that I like more coming out of his stake win than I like Happy Saver. But if you really believe in him, those two races at Saratoga and Belmont, then uh, you can definitely justify picking him. The two is prioritized. who's coming out of a third-place finish in the Woodward. I didn't really like him that much going into the Woodward. He has hadn't run in stakes company in over a year and a half uh, at the point when he was running in the Woodward. His last stake start was at Belmont, second place finish in the Hill Prince. You can probably expect him to run uh, in the money finish, or if not in the money, on the board. It's only four horses, so uh, it's not really that hard to say that, but I think you could get a good third place finish out of him in here, uh, kind of the same thing as the Woodward. I wouldn't use him as a win contender here. I don't think uh, even though I think some of the top horses in this race have been maligned in talent, uh, your Tacitus is in your uh, Mystic Guides. We don't really know what he is in terms of talent. They may be a little bit maligned, but I think prioritized, to, even with those horses' talent in, in question, I don't think he has the talent to step up and beat them here. But I think he could run a good race underneath. Uh, we'll get into the third horse, Name Changer, who's the longest price on the board. Uh, and I, I think it's fair to say rightfully so. If you look at him over the course of his career, overall he's been very consistent. He does have one bad race, and that was the Smarty Jones Stakes at Parks, but that was way back in 2016. So there, there is some consistency with him. He is coming out of a fourth-place finish in the Salvatore Mile, third this year in an allowance at Laurel, and then was also second in a black type back in March. So three good efforts this year. I just don't think he has any. It has the talent that the other horses in here have. So he was a look against for me, but if you like some of the – Races that he's been able to run in the past. He was the winner of the Monmouth Cup back in 2018. So if you think that he's going to run back to some of those races when he was a five-year-old, then you can consider to use him here. The four is Tacitus, the horse that most people think is the best horse in this race. Well, he is the best horse in this race, but the horse that most people think uh, is the most likely winner here. And I do agree with that, but I was super turned off by the Woodward the last start. I thought that that was a race he easily should have won. Now, maybe Global Campaign was a better horse, and I think uh, either of us, myself or my co-host on the show, gave him credit for. But I still think Tacitus should have beaten him uh, in, in that race. He is coming back to Belmont, though, where he did, did have uh, his biggest success of this year, and basically the biggest success of his career, uh, since he won the, the Wood Memorial back in April of 2019. That was the win in the Suburban. He gets back to the mile and a quarter. Uh, the Woodward was a mile and a quarter, but he gets to the mile and a quarter here at Belmont. I think that that is definitely an angle that you can look at to help him. He was third in the Jockey Club Gold Cup last year. Uh, the horses that beat him, Vino Rosso, Breeders' Cup Classic winner, 
Code of Honor had won the Travers and beaten Tacitus already earlier in the year. Uh, also beat, had finished ahead of him in, in the Kentucky Derby. So got beat by two better horses on the day. He definitely gets a class break here. I think that this field is more closer to the Suburban in talent than it is to the Woodward. So he should win this race. If he doesn't win this race, I would be very even more discouraged off of him than I already am. The real reason I'm going against him, though, is because he is going to take so much money. And I do think... Uh, the five who I will get into, Mystic Guide, is the horse that I did put on top in this race. I do think he does have a really reasonable shot to challenge him. So there's a lot of reasons to pick Tacitus. The price is not going to look super good, but if you're willing to to swallow the, the really low odds with him, he, he's a very logical pick here. And the final horse that I, I've been talking about a little bit probably throughout this whole video is Mystic Guide, the horse that I did put on top in this race. He's coming out of a win in the Jim Dandy. Uh, prior to that, he was third in the Peter Pan Stakes. He was beaten third by two horses that I think are really, really quality horses. Country Grammar, who I don't think was the best horse in the Peter Pan, but did, is, uh, I think, a quality stakes-level horse. I think we will see him at some point get another graded stakes win. Uh, I think the best horse coming out of that race was obviously Caracaro. Did run his really good second place finish behind Tis the Law in the Traverse Stakes. Would have been a very interesting horse in the Kentucky Derby had he been able to go there. And even going back further to the allowance race that he lost to Belmont back in June, he was beaten by Tappet to win in that race. So we know that Tappet to win is a grade one place horse, did run a good second behind Echo Town in the Allen Jerkins and did also win the unbridled sticks at Gulfstream. So Tappet to win's a quality horse, did beat him by five and a half lengths on the day he was well beaten. But Mystic Guide has come back and did get that win in the Jim Dandy most recently. And the thing I'll say about the Jim Dandy, Two horses from that race did go on and run in the Preakness. None of the horses from the Federico Tessio uh, ended up running in the Preakness. And Jesus' team from that race, Mystic Guy beat him pretty handily. Jesus' team did run a really good third-place finish. Obviously, he was never close to the top two, if you've seen the Preakness. But I do think that the hor I do respect the, the horses in talent out of the Jim Dandy more so than I do respect the Federico Tessio. And that was ultimately the tiebreaker between Happy Saber and Mystic Guide. I do think that... Mystic Guide beat better horses in the Jim Dandy than Happy Saver beat in the Federico Tessio. And ultimately, in a race where I think that the horses are that close, I, I feel comfortable using that as my tiebreaker. Normally wouldn't do that, but I felt comfortable enough to do it here. It is worth mentioning Live Your Beast Life did not run very well, but I do think that Jesus' team and Dr. Post both being uh, horses that have run well earlier this year, did give it enough, did give me enough confidence to say that, that that race was better marginally than the Federico Tessio. So ultimately I went with Happy Saver on top. In terms of underneath, there's not really much to much to go on. I will go the two older horses tacit as second prioritized third. Uh, but this is a five horse field. You can go any arrangement underneath. Anything underneath is kind of a bit of a crapshoot. But ultimately, that's it for this video. I will see you next time. Thank you for stopping by. Have a good weekend. And it is Celtic Striker. Jesus's team has come away with the lead here. It's Jesus's team in front as they come down for the eighth pole. But here is Mystic Guide on the outside. Mystic Guide and Jesus's team. Dr. Post is in fourth with just the 16th of the finish. And on the outside looking for an upset is Live Your Beast Life. But it is Mystic Guide with those white blinkers to win the grade two Jim Dandy.